Hello friend, welcome to my channel 5 Minute Pediatric. Few days back, I have posted question uh, related to this uh, CT, this Deva ST that seven year child comes for focal seizure and CCT showing this. So what are the common differential and how to differentiate and what protocol uh, you follow? So this is a case of neurosystem sarcosis. Uh, this CCT is showing ring enhancing region. So why this is uh, neurosystem sarcosis? Uh, we will learn in this video. So neurosystem sarcosis usually present with uh, uh, one of the following clinical feature. It may present with seizure in the form of focal or generalized uh, or sometimes unknown onset. And then feature of raised ICT in the form of headache, vomiting, diplopia, blurring of vision, squint due to involvement of cranial six. Uh, if there is a no fever, if there is a history of uh, uh, acute onset of symptom, no history of contact with tuberculosis, these are the pointer more towards the neurosystem sarcosis over tuberculoma. So usually how we can diagnose it? We can diagnose the, with the help of uh, even plain CT, but contrast CT gives more exact figure. Uh, may show nodular calcification, may cystic or ring enhancing lesion, sometimes uh, spolex with edema. If uh, the lesion is uh, uh, unclear, uh, so we can go for contrast enhanced MRI. So the, what are the feature of tuberculoma in case of MRI? So in T2, we can get a high point intense score with large size, more than two centimeter thick and irregular marks. There is a marked irregular edema with mass effect and uh, there may be uh, associated basal exudate. Uh, usually serological tests are not recommended for diagnosis and management of uh, management in children. Routine screening is also not recommended. Uh, we, you can go for BA scan as uh, you have to rule out ocular neurosystem sarcosis. So what are the management? So we require an anti-epileptic drug. We have uh, uh, multiple options available in the form of uh, phenytoin, valproate, levaracetam. In case of focal seizure, you can use carbamazepine or carbamazepine. Uh, Anti-inflammatory drugs uh, in the form of uh, uh, we have uh, injectable dexamethasone given at a dose of 0.15 milligram per kg per uh, per dose every uh, six hourly that is QID uh, or we have prednisolone also uh, it is started uh, uh, before three days uh, before starting uh, cysticidal therapy. So next what we have cysticidal therapy. Before starting this, we have to rule out tuberculosis. Uh, uh, we have to go for chest X-ray and one tooth also. Uh, so what are the cysticidal therapy available? Uh, so depending upon a stage, if there is calcified lesion, you do not have to give any cysticidal therapy. And uh, if the, there is active lesion like uh, vesicular, colloidal, or uh, granular, nodular, so in that condition, you have to estroid albendazole, 15 milligram per kg per day uh, in, or in combination with praziquantel given for up to seven to 14 days. So uh, if there is more than two viable cysts, then you have to give uh, albendazole along with praziquantel for 10 to 14 days. So the important point we have, if uh, uh, there is cysticidal encephalitis or uh, multiple uh, viables that is more than five, then in con that condition, anti helminthic should be avoided. Okay, because it may worsen, uh, worsen perilinal edema and may uh, lead to raised ICT. IV steroids are the mainstay uh, in case of cysticidal uh, encephalitis. So we have injectable dexamethasone or even we have pulse methyl prednisolone uh, for three to five days, then uh, we go for tapering. So there is no routine prophylaxis for anti seizure medication in children with NCAC who do not have seizure. So if the child is, uh, is not having seizure, so you do not have to give any anti epileptic drug.
So you have to maintain the hygiene in order to prevent its recurrence. So you have to start the treatment and then you have to follow up after uh, six months. Again with CCT or contrast enhanced MRI. If the scan is suggestive of resolution, then, uh, then antiepileptic you can taper it and then stop. Uh, if the lesion is calcified, then continue AED for two years seizure free interval. Okay. If there is a persistent of lesion in a, a MRI or CECT, then you have to retreat this condition with alvendazole or a combination with praziquantel. Okay. Uh, so now what are the difference between neurocystic sarcosis and tuberculoma? So if we go, uh, we have a neurocystic sarcosis, maybe single or multiple, but the size is less than two centimeter. But the size of tuberculoma is more than two centimeter and it is mostly uh, multiple. In case of neurocystic sarcosis, you may not get a feature of meningitis. But tuberculoma, you may get feature of meningitis. Uh, location of neurocystosarcosis is usually gray white matter junction, but uh, uh, tuberculoma is present at posterior fossa. Feature of raised ICTV can be present in both the condition, but uh, neurocystosarcosis it is uh, generally transient, but it uh, persists for longer period. If you go for uh, MR spectroscopy, you can get a multiple amino acid peak in neurocystis. This question is frequently asked. So uh, I have many monies for this uh, tuberculoma, you get L. So we have lipid peak in tuberculoma and amino acid peak in neurocystis sarcosis. In, uh, if we look for constitutional symptom, there is no constitutional symptom in neurocystis sarcosis usually, but constitutional symptom is present in tuberculoma. There is no focal neurological deficit uh, in case of neurocystic uh, sarcosis, uh, while tuberculoma present with uh, focal neurological deficit. These are the common difference you can easily remember. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Kindly like, subscribe, and follow my channel.